Hello, this is your Unit 3 Test Remediation. We're going to go over the most missed questions. So the first most missed question was question 3 from the open window passage. It says, which line from the open window foreshadows the trick the niece will play? Um, and we just need to know foreshadowing is kind of that hinting at um, something that will happen. And we've got the what will happen, the trick that the niece will play. So as long as you understood the passage, what the niece um, <laughs> pulled over and um, reading your options, try process of elimination. So A, her great tragedy happened just three years ago, said the child, that would be since your sister's time. So this was part of that story that she's making up. Um, but this is not the technique of foreshadowing. It's not hinting to the reader the trick. It's the actual making up of the story. Uh, B, do you know sometimes on still quiet evenings like this, I almost get a creepy feeling that they will walk in through that window. And again, you would have to understand that that was the, um, you know, part of her story. If you didn't really understand that Mr. Nuddle never realized she was playing a trick, um, sometimes the reader gets confused and thinks <laughs> that the um, men that went out hunting actually were ghosts. So that's the whole trick she's playing. So still another part of her trick, but not the foreshadowing. C, my aunt will be down presently, Mr. Nuttall, said a very self-possessed young lady of 15. In the meantime, you must try and put up with me. Um, that's just letting her know or letting him know that she is there to keep him company. Um, I'd say it's just the phrasing of you must try and put up with me. That may be through some people off. Um, but again, it's just a phrase that's sharing with her um, or sharing sharing with Mr. Nuttall, sharing with the reader that that's what's happening at that time. And then D, then you practically know nothing about my aunt pursued the self-possessed young lady. Um, that would be our correct answer because that lets the reader know after, you know, the question mark um, and his response that he doesn't know anything. So she is able to successfully pull off this story um, because he is so unaware. And that would be our foreshadowing um, of the trick, setting that up. It's really just setting the scene that she's able to play the trick because he doesn't know anything. Um, next most missed question if it won't change here, is um, from question 9 and 10. Um, I put up there because we had, sorry, 8 and 9. Um, I put up there because part B was really the issue for a lot of people. Uh, however, part A, um, I needed to put up there so you understood where part B was coming from. So this is from the cast of Amontillado. And the lines um, in part A say, then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain the noise lasted for several minutes, during which that I may might hearken to it with more satisfa the more satisfaction. I ceased my labors and sat down upon the bones. So part B is kind of asking, why does the author use this technique? Now, a lot of us got the technique right, but not the why. Um, so the technique used in, that, in those sentences is really slowing things down. It's pacing. Um, then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes. So you can see that endurance that's showing that pacing. So by process of elimination, hopefully you got pacing for A. And then B, why is that technique used? So why would we slow things down? Um, a lot of us thought it was building the tension, but it's actually building a mystery, building the question, because we don't have enough information um, at that point for us to um, you know, to really feel that tension. This could be argued. I agree, it's somewhat subjective. Um, but the, the purpose of the author's craft here in, in that pacing is to build that mystery and wonder for the reader. So the narrator says, then I heard the furious vibrations of the chain. The noise lasted for several minutes, during which that I might hearken to it with more, more, the more satisfaction. Some of that word choice, knowing the narrator, um, there's not... A sense of tension there he's really accomplishing what he wants and it's just the mystery for the reader as to you know what happens next now he's going to kind of stop everything it's just going to sit down um, and and wait okay so the correct answer for B is A
that sounds weird. The correct answer for part B is A, which is number question nine. And then our last most missed question was um, actually coming from the most dangerous game. And so I clipped the passage here and highlighted the information that we have. Um, the information we have is coming from Rainsford's dialogue with um, Zaroff. So part A, um, you know, more, more so we had trouble with part B as far as the attitude advancing the plot. Um, but I included 17 as well so that we can see part A. So for part A, what does the interaction between Rainsford and General Zaroff reveal about his attitude towards him? And um, most of us got this one, which was D, he believes the behavior is inhumane. And you could see that with just the words that he has. So Zaroff answering, um, or qu lots of questions here, civilized and you shoot down men. Um, then he talks about, you know, yeah, I give him exercise, I feed him, all that, plump him up. And, <laughs> and he goes, well, what do you mean? He talks about his training school. And then the fact that it's a game. Um, and Rainsford's response, suppose he refuses to be hunted. Um, he says, well, I give him an option that they can either go with me or they end up with Ivan, right? Um, they usually choose to hunt. And if they win, so lots of questions so that he's figuring out what's happening um, on this property and what kind of the rules are, the house rules, right? So definitely believing that Zaroff's behavior is humane for 17. And then 18, which was part B, how does his attitude advance the plot? So you really have to look at what specifically do we know about Rainsford in this section? Um, and it is A, he's realizing that being the hunted offers a chance for survival, okay? Because he has those questions that um, he's posing, what if they're refusing to be hunted? And what if they win? So there is a chance. B says he knows Zaroff is unpredictable. We don't have that information from just this excerpt um, from Rainsford's attitude. So it's really just carefully reading that. C, he thinks Zaroff likes to play games. Again, we don't have that information here because we have just those questions that he is asking and that he understands he is expected to go hunting. That was the most commonly picked answer besides A. Um, we don't have that information as a reader just yet, okay, because he's still kind of figuring out what this is that General Zaroff does um, and how he preps the men and everything. So he's just kind of asking those questions. We don't have enough information yet. Um, and that's the challenge too, because you guys read the whole thing. So make sure you're using just what you have, what's provided for you in the passage to answer the questions. Go back in, find that evidence. So in this specific area, we only have those highlighted questions from Rainsford to determine his attitude. Okay, if there's other questions that you need me to go over um, that you're confused on, just send me an email. Um, I do have um, the ability to check that to the, throughout the day and get back to you. Um, and I will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day.